Corporate Finance Excel Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in Excel related to calculating cost of goods sold using FIFO, otherwise known as first in, first out. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in Excel. We have our information on the left. We're going to put that into the blue area into our worksheet on the right. We're going to be calculating using first in, first out, which is a flow assumption, otherwise known as FIFO. We're going to be needing some type of flow assumption when we make inventory and that inventory is basically all the same in nature. Typically the price will be uh, relatively low as opposed to custom products and they're going to be the same in nature. Therefore, we're not going to track each individual unit, but rather we're going to use a flow assumption. The flow assumption that is very common is first in first out. That's what we would like to be the flow assumption of the inventory typically, meaning the first units that we have produced are the first ones that we sell. Uh, that means that we're going to have, you know, the newer units will be on hand typically, and we're going to sell the older units. Now, from a flow assumption, typically that's what we would kind of want to have normally. That's why FIFO uh, usually is something that's going to be a, one of the more common flow assumptions as opposed to LIFO. And then the average method are going to be the typical methods used. Okay, so we have the beginning inventory, our 550 units. We've got the cost per unit are going to be $22. So this is when we started. So we started with this cost level. Now note what happens when we when we buy inventory over time or if we make inventory over time, the cost will typically go up under normal times, under normal conditions. Why? Because of inflation. Meaning if all else is equal, then the cost of, or the value of the dollar will go down. And therefore, you know, the purchase to purchase the materials or to purchase the inventory will typically go up over time. So it could go the other way, but normal under normal conditions, you would think that the price of the units will go up over time. So that means that as we move forward, we're going to have our inventory that's going to be on the books as an asset that's going to have different valuations because it have different costs to them, even though we're imagining all the inventory units being the same. So, so how do we deal with that changing price level? So we're going to say the units produced in the current uh, month are going to be 950 units. They're going to cost more. They're going to cost $25 to make them. Units sold during the month are 1,000. So which units did we sell then is going to be our question here. Did we sell the, 25, the, the units that cost us $25 or did we sell the units that cost us $22? Now, there's different ways when you, when you see a problem like this, you can approach it different ways if it's like a multiple choice type of question. But uh, they could ask you for the for the sales, which ones did you sell, and and the cost of goods sold calculation, as we've been asked here, or they could ask you for the ending inventory. So when you see a problem like this, you, I would recommend setting up a worksheet that's similar to this, even though it's somewhat tedious to do so, because it's the easiest way to keep in your mind and standardize the whole process, right? You can then say, okay, I don't care what they ask me. I don't care if they ask me to calculate the cost of goods sold or the ending inventory. I'm going to set up a worksheet that will do both so that I can figure out whatever you know needs to be done. So that's this is what I would recommend setting up. We're going to set up the, this is the production or the purchases, depending on if we make the inventory or if we purchase them. And this is where we're going to put the uh, cost of the production, the increases. Then we've got the sales that are going to be happening or the cost of goods sold because we're not really tracking the sales price. We're tracking the cost of the items we're selling. The sales price will be separate. It will be more per unit unless we're selling it for less than the cost, which it would be unusual. And then we have the ending inventory. This is what's left over that has not yet been sold. So you can imagine here that if we sell, if we're imagining that we're going to sell the $22, $22 units, the ones that we have on hand are $25 that we're going to have on hand. Even though they're the same units of inventory, they have different cost. the same things, the same kind of things are there. They have different costs because of the change in the price of them over time, possibly due to simply inflation, the decrease in the value of the dollar, in other words. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to say the beginning inventory. I'm going to put this in the produced or, or uh, purchase column. We're going to, we're going to say this is, these are, this is kind of like the increase column to the inventory. And we're going to put the beginning inventory on the books at the 550 uh, units and they all cost $22. So I'm going to say that this then is going to be equal to the, to the 550 times the $22. So that's what we would have uh, at that point in time. Then we're going to say that the, the current month production 
the amount that we're going to produce in the current month, we're going to be increasing by, we're going to pick up the 950 and those cost us $25, $25. So if we multiply this out, we're going to say, all right, then we have the 950 times 25. That gives us a total number of units. So if we sum up the units for the time period, we have 1,500. Let's underline this home tab font group, underline the total cost equals the sum of these items are going to be here. And there we have that. So that would be, you know, for the, for the entire month. Now, obviously we made sales during the month. So if we think about the sales that we made and uh, we're using kind of a periodic type of system. So you can imagine it's, it's the, you know, the, the end of the month and we're figuring out how many sales we had and instead of, you know, a periodic system versus a perpetual system. A perpetual system would basically be every time we make a sale, we're, we're like uh, recording that sale in the system and applying out the FIFO method as opposed to a periodic system where we kind of wait till the end of the period and then we apply out uh, our FIFO method. So here we're saying the units sold during the month were 1,000. So we know during the month we sold 1,000. So now we're going to apply out and say, okay, well, which units did we sell? Did we sell the 550 units that cost $22? Or did we sell the 950 units that cost $25? Or in other words, which ones did we sell first? So under the first in first out method, we imagine we sold the, uh, the first units first. The first ones in will be the first ones out. Those cost $22. Notice normally the first ones in will be cheaper if there is a difference in price than the later ones that we per produced or purchased because uh, of inflation, if all else is equal. Although it could go the other way around and under normal conditions, you would kind of expect that to be the general you know, flow of things. The, the you know, prices typically go up because of inflation over time, all else equal. So then we're gonna say that uh, we have the unit, the, the amount that we're gonna sell, we're gonna sell these 550 first, which will wipe these out. So what we could think about is they could say in the sales column or the cost of goods sold column, these are the, these are the sales items we, we sold. In other words, these are the units we sold, but we're figuring out the cost of the units we sold, not the sales price of the units we sold. So we sold the 550 units. Those cost $22. So that means the total cost is 550 times the 22. Now of those units, we could think about how much is left then in ending inventory zero right of that of that row 550 minus the 550 at the 22 dollars price is now left which of course means there's nothing in ending in, in inventory related to them but we sold 1000 units so that means we're gonna have to cut into that 950 uh for the 1000 we sold so we're gonna say i'm gonna do it this way this equals the 1000 minus the 550 that we took out of the the prior you know section that means we have 450 left that we need to sell so in other words if i add these two up it adds up to a thousand we've got the 550 in of the prior units now we sold the 450 of the current units these cost 25 dollars to to produce and so the 450 times the 25 gives us the 11250 so if we add these up then if we sum these up we're going to be given our cost of goods sold. Let's underline this home tab font group underline. That means cost of goods sold 23, uh, 350. That's what we were asked, but we could have just as easily been asked how much is left in ending inventory. So we would have to take this one step further and say, okay, well we had then the 950 units minus the 450 that we sold of the $25 units. These are all $25 units. Therefore, what is left is going to be equal to the 500 times the $25. If we sum this up, then this is going to be our ending inventory. So again, they might ask you for, for the sales. They might ask you for the ending inventory. And notice that if you just, if, if you were to, to, um, to just do this first portion, you can kind of, you can figure it out basically just by looking at this without writing the whole thing out. You could say, okay, well, you know, if you ask me for the amount that was cost that was sold, then I'm going to figure out the 550 uh, and and then and then how much of these were sold, the 450. If you ask me for how much is left, well, then I can say, okay, well, you, you know, we had the uh, 1,500 and there's only, 
uh, we sold 1000. So 500 are left. And then I can look at these numbers and say, well, the 500, the ones that are going to be left are in the latest item because it's the first in first out. So the later ones, which are typically the more expensive ones are going to be the ones that are left on the balance sheet. And so I can just take the 500 times the 25 if they're asking that. But you, it, however you think it, I would, I would work this whole worksheet out in your, in your mind and actually write it down. And if you have to write it down by hand, if you're practicing for a test, I would do so just so that you can practice writing it down and, and just have it, uh, the system in your mind, no matter what they ask you. So it doesn't matter if they ask you for the cost of goods sold or the invento ending inventory, they'll possibly ask you for both many times. And you'll just be able to uh, set up the, the worksheet the same way, no matter what.